live on Facebook. We are live on Zoom. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joseph Puckett. Joseph Puckett, co-founder of Craig Wiggins Coaching. Super excited to have you all today for our very special webinar with my friend, Todd McLean, former mega agency owner, uh, smarketingmail.com founder, also has been a part of other technology ventures and has even more stuff in the works. Y'all are talking to a marketing genius today. I hope I'm not teeing you up too much, Todd. Yeah, but he's uh, a marketing uh, genius and he's here to sound teach worse. you. Yes. Okay. He's an all right guy. You guys, maybe you'll learn a few things, but no, seriously, get ready to learn, get ready to grow. Just a quick plug for marketing mail, marketing mail provided direct mail for me and Craig at Craig Wiggins agencies for several years. Amazing programs. Todd and his whole team are really, really great about working with agencies to customize plans to meet their needs. Make sure that you're targeting the right areas. You know, they want you to succeed so that you continue to use their programs. I just want to thank Todd for being a great partner at CWC. I know he works and they work with dozens and dozens of our member agencies. If you're not involved with Marketing Mail, get ready to learn some things on your own, but I would highly encourage that you reach out to their team. So check them out at smartingmail.com. But with that said, I'm going to pass the mic to my man, Todd McLean. Thank you, sir. Take it away. JP, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully everybody gets some insights out of this. Even if you don't use my services, I wanted to make sure that you walk away with maybe a couple of key things to consider um, if with the direct mail you might be doing in-house or doing with another provider if we don't have the zip codes available for you. So um, this, this wave is, is what I'm calling it, this wave of preferred customers. And preferred customers could be uh, dependent upon what you consider or your carrier considers preferred. To me, I think of like a preferred customer as I can write the business and it's a multi-line household. So I'm bundling which is huge for all of, especially if you're a captive agent, um, not only for the enhanced compensation that you can get, bonuses you can get, but also the retention of the customer. Because typically your preferred customers, they're not really the rate shoppers. Um, they're not the people that are gonna go online, put in their information because they know once they hit the enter button, they're gonna get spammed for the rest of their life, right? So they're not going to be your data lead they're not going to be your telemarketing lead. These are mostly uh, your uh, preferred high-end customers that come through the direct mail channel. And so I wanted to go through just kind of what, what is the opportunity that currently exists because of the market cycle that we're in? And why is this time different than the other market cycles, like the 08 market cycle? Well, this market cycle, uh, and I'm going to go through this kind of quick because I, I know you guys know this for the most part. Um, I'm just setting it up. But inflation is huge from an egg, like we've all seen the TikToks or memes about eggs, the cost of eggs, to insurance. It's when these times occur is when more affluent people start to shop. So your preferred customers who have multiple cars, who might have a vacation home, who want the umbrella might have a boat specialty, right? Those preferred, more affluent shoppers start to shop. And um, those people don't typically go online and put in their information and get spam blasted. So unfortunately, you have to pay more for those types of consumers when they're shopping and you want to use the right medium of marketing in order to get in front of them. Other things that you may consider uh, why people are shopping even more, especially homeowners, is because property values have dramatically increased. So when property values increase, property taxes increase. Well, if they're escrowed, which over 80% of homes are escrowed, then you have people trying to make their mortgage payment go down. Instead of fighting property values, they would rather fight and shop homeowners insurance. So you have that angle of people seeing their mortgage payment go up Oh, I need to shop homeowner's insurance for that. Uh, not only with the auto insurance increase, they might get drafted every month out of their account. So the other thing is the carrier disruptions are completely different this cycle. I have never seen so many carriers um, either stop writing certain lines of business, cut out certain types of vehicles, not writing certain values of homes. Um, there's just so many different carrier changes on underwriting and and what's what's acceptable business for carriers than I've seen in any market cycle. And we all know some of the largest rate increases back to back for a lot of carriers that we've ever seen. So this is, you know, creating a lot of shopping movement within the market. 
And another thing a lot of people don't consider is there's more agencies being sold right now than I've ever seen. And when somebody sells their agency, that could create a shopping opportunity for that customer base. If they notice a new agent comes in, maybe they really like their agent. Um, and, and so just reasons why more affluent preferred sh shoppers are happening now versus any other time in the market. So what I wanted to do to kind of give you guys some, um, some information on when you are sending out direct mail, you need to know who you're marketing to. I've seen so many um, bad comments about corporate mail, um, how it's just cookie cutter looking, call to action suck. Uh, there's, just, there's just no research into who they're mailing to. And so what I want you to do is when I'm giving you this information, think about what mail you're sending out and if it applies to your ad copy. And if you think your ad copy might need to change, especially if you're with us, if you think the ad copy might need to change, give us some recommendations because we can tweak ad copy for agents um, so to an extent. Now, one of the key things I wanted to do is break down the different types of market. So first being millennials. And something that might surprise you is 63% um, of millennials, so 27 to 42, read print catalogs they receive in the mail, and 65% have made a purchase based on a direct mail marketing. Now, most people, when you think of millennials, you don't think of direct mail, but 65% of, I mean, because it goes up to age 42, I'm, I hate that I'm a millennial, but I am titled a millennial. Um, but I have made a, a, a purchase through a direct mail piece that's come in. And so you just need to understand that it's, it does work for certain types of people if you are listening to what they want. And so some of those things are about 80% of millennials would like to be entertained by brand and ad copy. So entertained doesn't mean you need to have jokes on it or memes on your mail. It, it just means that it needs to be colorful, lively, simple, um, and, and something that's not really corporate driven looking. They're more likely to spread your brand and your agency on social media. So sending referrals. Um, so make sure that your social media is in, in order and that people are sharing and liking your, your agency on, on social media. And they prefer technology, but want the option of a trusted advisor. So on your ad copy, something to the effect of a trusted advisor, or you can always reach out to us uh, for advice, not the Geico 1-800 number kind of feeling that they're going to get. And millennials, a lot of people don't consider this because they want to cut out. I don't want to mail to somebody who's under 30. A lot of millennials don't have young drivers. So why wouldn't you want to send to them if your carrier is not competitive with teenage drivers in a household? Right. So that's something to think about. Like, why would I want to cut out that kind of uh, age range on if they're a homeowner, if they're married, if they have multiple cars, then millennials are a good target market that will buy through direct mail as long as you are not corporate looking. Your Gen X and your boomers, uh, 43 to 77, have the highest direct mail response rate. Go figure. Um, but some key things to know about your those that age range is they're not wanting to be entertained. They want a good deal and they want discounts. So on your ad copy, it needs to emphasize in your, your call to action that they're going to get a good deal or they're going to get discounts. And then something really big that I've found that our more successful agents have with direct mail is you need to realize that about 68% of these uh, Gen X to boomers are going to visit your website before making a purchase. So your reviews, you need to have a lot of five-star reviews and you need to look professional because they say, 60% say the main convincing factor to buy was the quality of information in the ad and the salesperson who sold them. So just kind of things to think about. And um, I already went through the key takeaways there down there at the bottom, but number three, I didn't really uh, hit it too hard, but having social proof. So not only having reviews on your website, linking your reviews, but Google reviews are huge, really huge, because most of your, uh, anybody over 43 to 77, about almost 70% of them are going to go look at your reviews. So make sure you have enough reviews, make that important in your office that your customers who like you, know you, trust you, are leaving you Google reviews 
um, because it helps your direct mail. A lot of people, a lot of agents don't tie how a Google review might increase the ROI on your direct mail. And if you haven't tied those things together, you need to start thinking that way because when you send somebody your ad or if they see you on a billboard, if they see you on a shopping cart, like they're going to look you up. And if you don't have good social proof by having good reviews, then your marketing might not work as well as it would have if you took the time to do that. So uh, just something to think about. Now, how do you target during this cycle? There's good hope, good news for those of you who have not been tracking your data like I preach all the time. You get to start over. And the reason why you would want to start over in targeting during this rate cycle is basically a question you ask yourself. Are large carriers with large market share taking rate increases right now? Did you take a large rate increase? If the answer is yes, then you're going to have a, a period of time where customers need to renew. New business rates need to play around, uh, you know, play out between each other and, and carriers. So you have to wait for those renewal cycles to go through, which takes um, you know, a while, up to a year, depending on how many rate increases, you know, somebody like State Farm, who has the most market share, Geico, Progressive, and the auto share. So you got to think, do I want to dial in from last year's numbers and zip codes and just start there? Absolutely not. Um, instead, what we recommend doing is taking a small radius, and I say small, it's within driving distance. So if you're in the suburbs, people will drive 10 to 15 miles in order to go to a professional's office. Um, you know, if you're in the rural area, then they might expect to drive 20 or 30 miles, uh, which would be acceptable. So you need to kind of rezone an area around your office and focus on those people that are going to be within that radius because you don't know what zip codes you should be targeting because the rates have not cycled um, yet, right? So think about that. And then don't get too crazy. You know, don't, don't throw too much money at a huge radius around you. If you want to go to a different market, you can go to a different market and do a radius, like a, a 15 mile radius around a, a big city or an area around the suburbs. But make sure that if you are leaving your area code for your office, to change and get a new phone number with that area code so that you appear local to the consumer. Okay, so make sure that you're doing a local area coded phone number wherever your mail piece is hitting. And I, I get the question a lot, what if a, you know, the Dallas-Fort Worth area has three different area codes? As long as an area code they recognize in their area, it doesn't matter, right? So you don't have to get too specific on that area code as long as they're going to recognize it as local. And then, um, there is a caveat. If you have a zip code where you know your carrier is not competitive, like in my example here, if the homes were built before 1960, keep continue to exclude that zip code, right? If there is a pocket of suburb or rural area or type of house that you know you can't write, then I'm obviously saying not, not to blast that zip code, especially if there's, um, you know, there's a lot of zip codes in my area where the, their homes were built before the 1960s, and there's a couple of zip codes where the, the city was built around those zip codes, I'm going to exclude those zip codes, no matter what the price is, because my carrier doesn't want it. And then uh, make sure that you're taking between eight to nine months before you start dialing in on those zip codes that you really want to target. And again, eight to nine months, because those consumers have to all get their rate increases before you get a good idea of how you're competing against some of the biggest carriers in the market. Now, if I have small carriers that, you know, AAA, um, Farm Bureau in my area, if I have really small carriers in the future taking rate increases, I'm not letting that impact my zip codes at all because they're not the larger players in the game. Um, and so I'm not going to let those people make me spend a bigger chunk of my marketing dollars refocusing my efforts on marketing, I'm going to instead only wait until the big players are doing any kind of rate shaking up before I kind of redo my radius. Then what I really want to make sure everybody understands is response rate. This is probably the number one reason um, why agents quit direct mail. 
And I can, I wanted to go through my personal example. I mean, I am the direct mail guy. In April of 2021, my response rate fell to a horrible 0.35%. I mean, that's terrible. But I added my wife's photo on my mail piece because I married up, obviously, just like JP. Um, and in May, the next month, it went to 0.64%. So I doubled my response rate. And in May, May is actually a lower response rate month because it's the end of the school year. So I got an amazing response rate, even in a, in a lower contact rate month. Um, and it was because I put my wife on the photo. So obviously a pretty girl might get a um, better response rate, but what I want you to think about this, this isn't only with direct mail. This is just the reality of ad copy and, and the marketing world. You want to grab everyone's attention and give them no reason to dislike the ad. Okay. Every market is different. Your photo might turn off parts of the market. I'm a, a white male in my upper 30s. There's a lot of people who probably don't want to do business with me. Now, whatever you know, qualms I have about that, it doesn't matter. Because with direct mail, you need every possible response to make it work. And so I got over myself and people's opinions as fast as I could. I said, what does my market what is going to bring in the most response rates for my ad copy? I tried my wife out and here we are. <laughs> so um, again, you it, it was definitely difficult for me to think through um, and be okay with it because obviously, uh, you know, there's some uh, personal reasons why you might not be okay with it. But at the end of the day, it's ad copy. You want people to respond to you. Um, and currently we're testing uh, some edge cases where showing no photo at all can have a potential higher response rate. And the reason is, is because people see the offer of what you're offering, the home quote, the discounts, better pricing, um, professionalism, whatever the case may be, instead of creating judgment about a photo on the piece of ad copy. So that's something, if you're getting bad response rates and you might think it's because of um, things out of your control, people's opinions, then get rid of the, the aspect of your ad copy, like maybe your photo or your staff's or your whatever the case may be. Um, get rid of that and you will you might see a higher response rate. So something to think about. Other things on response rates, direct mail, you're gonna have lower response rates typically during the holidays and big school months. So spring break is more difficult. Uh, May is difficult whenever you have uh, the end of school year. And then you have more of a little bit of difficulty in August when school starts back up. And then end of November and December have lower response rates. Now, we get a lot of agents who start during those four main months that response rates typically lower. And, you know, you immediately get a bad taste in your mouth if you start in those months. But being consistent is key because they, most of those people just aren't going to deal with that right now, but they need to deal with it. So they'll call you the next month. And so typically January is a huge month for, for response rate. Um, June is a big month. And it's always the month after the lower response rate because they are holding on to the mail piece. So if you start direct mail in a lower response rate month, wait, it's coming, right? So uh, be careful and, and thoughtful about that. And then make changes, don't just give up, okay? So for example, the photo um, on, on, your, on your piece, maybe like on our pieces, we use an image of a Google image street view of their house to kind of catch their attention on our ad. Um, maybe Google street view doesn't work very well in your market. So maybe take that off. Uh, maybe change um, parts about the, the call to offers or, or the, the call to action adding discounts, saying that you have discounts. There's, there's things that you can change based on the response rate to increase that response rate and test it, right? So we, we do a ton of the, uh, I do a ton of the testing for agents. That's a, another benefit of using our services is because I had a, a large agency and I've tested and tested and tested and spent, I probably spent about three to $400,000 in test mail so that my customers, you as agents, don't have to spend that money. 
Um, so we're usually testing ad copy before you even get it. We have some, some ad copy we're testing now and a uh, lot of, lot of reasons why you're not getting response rate that you could be by making some tweaks. So after about 60 days, um, this is two full months of running your ad, running your direct mail piece, that's when you should start making changes, okay? Because if you started in a, a slow month, you wanna wait for the next month to get an average between the two and then we'll go from there. And then something really big with direct mail, about 20 to 25% of all responses, so all inbound calls from these people who wanna quote, are coming in before and after hours. So before nine o'clock and after five o'clock. You must, you must, must, must have a custom phone number that's only for that mail piece with its own voicemail. So you do not wanna put these people through any phone tree, okay? Do not put them through a click one to leave a voicemail or don't, do not put them into a phone tree. That voicemail needs to say, I'm sorry I missed you for a home quote, we're going to give you a call back right when we get back into the office or something to that effect. And if they called that number, you know for sure they were calling for a home quote for this campaign. Um, so it's very simple. You just you have to do that or that 25 percent of your response rate. If you're not catching those, then you're going to have an abysmal ROI on direct mail. The other thing, uh, QR codes and texting. Um, QR codes, you want to be really sensitive about which type of QR codes you're using. So I, I use and recommend, and we recommend what's called a PURL, a personalized landing page. And these add, they're about two cents a piece to add the QR code to each mail piece. And the reason why they're two cents, which is actually stupid expensive, um, but what's happening is that it's saving that consumer's information, like their Google home, the, the image of their house. Uh, saving their name, and it's linking it to specifically to that QR code. So when the consumer scans it, it takes them to a web page with an image of the house, their name, their information, the, the quote on the mailer, and then it asks them for their name and phone number. And in ours, it asks if they'd like a auto quote as well. So what happens is when they click on the form on their web page on their phone, you know how the iPhone uh, or phone can pre-fill, um, auto-fill basically, the, the fields for their name and phone number, or not name, we already have their name, their phone number. Uh, and then all they do is click submit, and then the agent gets an email for that lead. Then the agent just calls the number. You can also get a QR code from your lead man. If you're an Allstate agent, you guys have QR codes. They're just not personalized, right? But a QR code is a really good, helpful way to get leads from people who don't want to make that phone call. They want you to call them. So using a QR code increases response rate anywhere from 0.05 to 0.1%. So it's not that big, but in the grand scheme of things, with direct mail, everything, every little bit extra response rate, every quote that you can get out of your campaign leads you to that ROI you need to make it work. Um, the other thing, so one of my competitors was was uh, pushing QR codes for texting. I definitely do not recommend that um, unless you're replying immediately to a text. Uh, you're not replying to a text with opt-out messaging, which is illegal. Um, not It's against TCPA to not reply with opt-out messaging to a marketing uh, campaign. So like hearsay that if, if I'm referring mainly to all state agents who have to use hearsay, whenever you have uh, have somebody send you a text, they're going to get opt out. If they opt out, now you can't even call a really expensive lead because they've opted out of receiving phone calls from that phone number. So do not use QR code texting uh, for direct mail. Now, other things um, might work for QR code texting. But if you're spending this much for direct mail, there's you do not want any one of those people opting out, right? That's just a no-no. Um, I recommend, and, and what I usually use as a rule for my office was, if we don't have any rapport with someone, you don't text them. But I'm, I'm not talking about, like, um, we had some automation campaigns for internet leads that, that I did texting with. You know, if I'm paying 3 to $5 for a, a data lead, 
I don't care if I'm texting them and they opt out. If I'm paying hundreds of dollars for a quote for a direct mail inbound call, there's not a chance I want them opting out. So hopefully that helps, helps everybody there. Um, here's some ways that uh, you can screw it up with direct mail. So you got an inbound call and they're asking you for a quote. So really high intent person. Um, these are the top ways that I've seen agents uh, really mess up using direct mail services. Okay. Number one is you, uh, you allow anyone, any salesperson in your office to take a call. So unfortunately, because of how expensive these leads are, you only want the best one call closers uh, or closers in general should gain access to these inbound leads. Okay, they need to be really good at excellent report building. Um, they need to be professional, uh, trusted advisors because that's what the main response people, the Gen X and the boomers want, trusted and professional advisors who they like, know, and trust. So make sure you only have the best people getting these leads. Some good practices that we had for that is you can use these leads as an incentive um, in your office. So for example, if you're if you have a minimum expectation and they don't hit it in a month, then the next month they don't receive these leads. Something to think about. Or um, you definitely want to listen to their phone calls and make sure that they are are building rapport properly. And, and any anytime you need help, obviously go to CWC and listen to report building and one call close and all those good um, things that you can find in CWC. So if you have a bad uh, follow-up process in place and you just extate these leads, I've talked to so many agents where their staff, they found out that their staff was simply extating somebody they didn't close. You've gotta be a lot more strategic with these expensive leads, okay? Because they're the highest intent leads possible. Other than a referral, these people are calling you for a quote. They will listen to you. They want your advice. They're, they're going to sit there and listen to you, talk to them. That's a high intent lead. And so for me personally, about 53% of all my sales on were after 18 months. And the reason why it, the average, I mean, obviously it started, the average was one month and then it kept expanding until about 18 months. The average was because of my follow-up process. I was capturing ROI when they had claims falling off, when a teenage driver aged out of the household, meaning they probably went to college. Um, you had somebody who, went from 24 to 25. So they aged up and got cheaper. Tickets fell off. Uh, what you don't want to do is mix these high intent leads with thousands of low intent data leads. Do not let these people be lost into your sea of lists. Okay. Make sure that your follow-up process is different with these leads than your internet data leads. Really important. Um, and then make sure um, if you're if you're not following up on quotes and listening to sales calls with staff, you're not going to have success. Like I was saying before, more expensive the lead, more serious you should take training on the type of lead. And then letting um, that's not the rate on the letter impact your pitch. So my people got really good at um, training. If the person on the other end of the line said, "Well, your letter says my premiums." $2,000, but you're quoting me $2,800. It's not about what's on the letter. That's the best price possible. It's all about how do we compete for your business against the carrier you have today? So you have to get really good at making it, how do we compete against your current insurance company versus whatever the price was on the letter? That letter is the best rate possible. It's the T's, right? And then um, if you want to give direct mail a shot, our pricing is dependent on volume. CWC members do get a discount. Our minimum volume is 3,000 mailers per month, and there's a four-month commitment. So it's if you did the minimum, it's a little less than 2,000. Um, I just put 2,000 as a round number. And if you're sending under 5,000 mail pieces, then it's only one drop a month. Um, if you send out more than that, so our average agent is sending about 7,000 mailers per month. If you, if you send out more than 5,000 millers, we can break that into bi-weekly. So every two weeks we drop uh, your, your mail and we target the home ex date 45 days before the renewal on the home. 
Brittany Meister um, is my managing partner. So we have her handle all of the introductory calls and you can uh, find her calendar link there to schedule a 15 minute uh, call with her or call her or email her. And she will go through zip code availability with you. I get agents all the time asking me, hey, Todd, can we talk about direct mail? Listen, I'd love to talk to you about direct mail, but you have to go through her for zip code availability first, or I'm going to make you promises that I can't keep. So uh, we got in, we got ourselves into too much trouble um, up front. And now it's go through Brittany, find out what's available, take a look at our ad copy. I didn't show you what our ad copy looks like on this presentation because we take that. I mean, I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars testing our ad copy. I'm not going to let somebody steal it from us um, simply. So that during that meeting, she'll show you the ad copy, uh, how it works, why it's why it's beneficial versus our competitors. And then you can talk about what zip code volume is available and what your budget is. And then she would go through the drop dates. Like uh, this is when we send you your leads. So it's completely turnkey. We download your leads. Uh, we send you the leads. You filter out your current customers and scrub and then send us back the list and then we do everything from there. That's it. Um, I'd love to open it up to questions. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and a really, really amazing tips. I hope that y'all were taking tons and tons of notes. Um, y'all take a screenshot of this, reach out to Brittany. Brittany's fantastic. Seriously, Todd, you married up at home, you partnered up in your business. She's amazing. <laughs> she is amazing yeah. resource for y'all to work with. Reach out, set up a 15 minute call, see where it goes. Do you have any other slides to share? Cause I want to show something. I don't, I can stop. Sharing. Yeah. You stop share and I'll make our faces bigger. Let's change this to gallery view. Oh, we need to make it wide. All right, there we go. Hopefully this is good. Let me change this to attendee view gallery. There we go. Okay. No joke. Literally seven minutes ago, share screen. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. I blacked out her name and her email address. Well, not her name, but her email address. Check this out, dude. And I've already emailed this to you. So I work with Carrie and her team. I coach their team. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah you can see this. I work with Carrie and her team there in Virginia. She loves y'all. We were emailing back and forth about something else. And she wanted to give me some good news. So today, April wrote a five car auto cross sell from a smarketing home that she wrote last month. So we got the home last month, but not the cars. Um, so no, five car auto cross sell, three car home and pup. Maybe she meant five items. So three car yeah. auto and an umbrella and an umbrella. I'm so freaking proud of her. She came to me and said we were hired to. Uh, all she could think about was what she told us, or excuse me, what I told them about, you know, just sell it, break it down monthly. So instead of saying we were $480 more a year, we're only $40 a month. The customer said, well, that's just a meal out. It wasn't worried and she sold it. <laughs> she didn't even awesome have to good. use the meal out excuse. The customer did it for her. Boom, it. right? It. So we teach at CWC to break it down daily. When we're higher in price, we want to break it down daily. Um, but dude, that's an amazing testimonial that I literally just got like seven, eight minutes ago because we were emailing back and forth on stuff. I got yeah. some questions here. Y'all, if you have questions, please submit them using the Q&A function. If you click on the little Q&A, it's hard for me to moderate questions from chat. So feel free to send me a question via Q&A and I will still look at the chat as well. Um, so George wanted to know how often will you remail the same zip code? I'll add to that. Do you hit the same prospect sometimes a couple times a year? Good question. Yes, I will, but it depends on the agent's budget. So um, I, I prefer in my office, I would mail them twice a year. And what I was trying to do is, so if the renewal date is January, then I'm hitting them at the beginning of December. Uh, so the home X date month that I want to get there when they get their renewal, but I'm also hitting them in May because most people, when they switch their auto insurance every six months, they're also switching their home at the same time. And so the home X date might be wrong. And what I found is most of the time it is wrong. Um, so, but we have to go off of the, basically X date, we go off of the title closing date of a property. So you assume that's when they bought their home, got their mortgage and, but if they switched insurance at renewal for auto at any time, then uh, the home X date will be wrong if you go off what just, you know, the title of the house says. 
So I would do bi biannual drops and hit them twice in a year, but that's more expensive and your ROI is actually less. Um, so it, it just depends on a lot of other factors, closing ratios, things like that as well, right? But uh, if you have a budget that's a little, little tight, then I would just stick with the home act state to be safe. Okay, very good. Um, so Jason said, you mentioned you take a radius around your agency to market with, but most market to an entire, to an entire state. Can you maybe talk about that decision? Yeah, that's a complete budget decision, right? Um, if you have the budget and, and the means to market to that many people and send out that many mail pieces, then obviously, by all means, do it. Um, the, the difficulty at that point, if you're going to get that large in your campaigns, that's when you want to start filtering out the, or getting really good at filtering out the underwriting requirements that your carrier doesn't like or doesn't want to write. Um, and, and so I, I would be more cognizant of those things, um, versus what zip code I'm competitive in because the rate cycle that we're in. Y'all. There is so much disruption going on right now. Huge. So much disruption going on in the industry. I saw a stat, I think it was on CNBC, something like 60% of Americans shopped their insurance last year or something like that. It was a crazy high statistic. I, I don't want to misquote what I saw on CNBC last week, but they were talking about all the disruption that's going on in the industry. Carriers pulling out of states, non-renewing policies, raising rates dramatically, fights with the departments of insurance in states like California and other things. There was just a lot of disruption going on. Good. Seize yeah. this opportunity. It's a lot well, easier now. People are way more receptive to getting quotes now because they've been having some pretty big rate increases, tighten guidelines. Some states like Louisiana, Florida, even parts of Texas, especially coastal, um, carriers are pulling out left and right. Great disruption brings great opportunity. And for the agency owners on the call, you know, rate increases are amazing for your book you're going to grow like crazy. Seriously, yeah. you're going to grow like crazy. You're going to have higher renewals, higher bonuses, higher new business commissions. When I'm working with a team and sometimes they're kind of down about their higher rates right now, I'm like, Hey, I get it. I get it. But congratulations. You all just got a raise every sale you make. Now you're going to be making more because you're paid commissions based on the premium. So we got to focus on the positive. We got to focus on the good direct mail is the best high intent lead that you can do, but it is an investment. Can you talk for just a minute more about how you measure your long-term ROI? Sure. ROI for your mail? Yeah. Um, I, w I think we forgot one qu uh, simple question. Will a toll free number have the same yes. effect as the local? Um, Toll free definitely does not have as good of an impact as a local. Um, toll free makes you think that they're going to call a call center when they're when they're hitting it. But how I how I look at overall ROI is definitely over a window of time because if fifty three percent of my ROI or my closed sales came after the eighteenth month, I had to make sure I stuck with a marketing campaign or a type of marketing, which is direct mail, long enough for me to start closing on leads that were 18 months old. Does that make sense? So I didn't, I didn't get, I would say my average ROI on a month to month basis up front, maybe the first 90 days was terrible. I would say it was probably 60% ROI. Um, but by the time I got their renewal, then I'm breaking even. And by the 18th month, when I'm closing more of the leads that have been existing and I'm getting that other auto renewal, that's when I'm really starting to notice a huge ROI. Um, the other big difference in ROI that people don't consider is the cost of, of headcount employees that you need to manage um, like a high data lead person. So I'm buying 5,000 leads a month. How many people does it take to work those leads? Because typically they're not including the cost of payroll uh, when, when calculating ROI or cost of lead acquisition. They're just looking at the straight lead cost, right? So the more people you need to work the leads, the more expensive these are. Um, with direct mail, you're not you're not you know telemarketing five thousand people in a month. You're getting you know five hundred people calling you, listening, ready to you know high intent, and and want to buy from you if you know how to sell them. In terms of you know ROI, the way we always looked at it was if we could make our money back 
within 12 to 24 months on any type of campaign, we felt pretty good about it. Yeah. Guys, think about this. If you could buy a book of business today, just go out, write a check, buy a book of business today, but in 12 to 24 months, you own it free and clear and all the renewals, all the bonuses, all the everything else you get forever and ever for basically free because it's paid for. Would y'all buy that book of business? Yeah. Right. People buy a book of business now and take seven to 10, maybe even up to 15 years uh, to pay it off. So basically every month, it's kind of like you're buying a mini book of business, right? But it does need to make sense. You do need to track it. Getting your team members to track the source of all of your quotes is super important. I don't want to know just direct mail. I want to know it's marketing direct mail versus carrier direct mail. So, so using different phone numbers is really important for tracking, tracking using different phone numbers. But long term, what did you say a majority of your sales came after 18 months? Is that what you said on that? Side? That was the average. Yeah. The average. So most of his closed sales came after they were nurtured for up to 18 months. Sure. You want immediate instant gratification to help pay for the campaign and stuff like that. But I'm just telling y'all what P word pays. If you're a CWC member, you know, this P word pays persistence persistence pays. You're going to close way more deals over time than you do right away. So keep that in mind and all of your tips on X dates around when claims are aging or falling off, potential renewal, tenure with time with carriers, um, who they're with, who they're with, knowing your competitive advantage over the Geico's, the progressive, your other um, uh, carriers that you uh, compete with in your area, being able to go back and cycle through that data, data is so valuable. You got to have all that data on your prospects. A couple uh, more questions that we have. If y'all have more, feel free to submit Q&A. Randy Smith wants to know, do you recommend also outbound calling your direct mail list? If there's phone numbers, what do you think? I don't. Um, now, I, I've done telemarketing. I could just consider that telemarketing because in all of the years that we did call on our lists, I don't think there was one time where they remembered getting the mail piece. Uh, and using that initial script or talk path of saying we sent you a mail piece was not engaging enough or a good call, off, uh, call to action versus I'd like to save you money kind of a call to action. Um, so the, the attention span script talk path of using the direct mail was not as successful as just calling people up randomly cold calling saying, Hey, we'd love to save you money on home and auto insurance. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of the data will probably be bad, right? Yeah, phone numbers, exactly. not right. Home numbers. Like I've got a home number. Do I have a home phone? <laughs> no, but I got the Comcast. I got the Comcast TV, Comcast internet for my kids. I use Google fiber for me. Well, several years ago, I was talking to Comcast. I'm like, I might have switch everything to Google Fiber. You know, it's really, really good. So, no, 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 we don't have to do that. Um, let, let me give you a home phone. I'm like, you're not hearing me. I'm trying to find ways to save my bill. She said, no, no, no. The way that it works is we'll give you a home phone line. You don't even have to install it or anything. It's more than free. It's going to save you like $40 a month. I was like, okay, then let's do it. I got a home phone number out there somewhere. I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything hooked up here. Right. Yeah. So a lot of the data will be wrong. I don't want your team members scraping that bottom of the barrel. They need right. to be working requotes, win backs, the quotes they did six months ago, 11 months ago, 17 months ago, you know, your fresher leads. They need to be asking customers for introductions to other people, referrals, developing relationships with partners, like all of that stuff takes precedence. Then cold calling through the phone book. Like that should be the last thing that a team member ever does. Jennifer right. says my carrier Allstate wants us to submit ads and mailers for compliance before using. Are your are your mailers compliant? Talk about compliance and like corporate sure. logos or not and stuff like that. Yeah, I just got a few of our Allstate customers reached out to us actually a few days ago. I have it up on my screen. So on the twenty, yeah, yesterday. Um, so you guys got a notice from Allstate saying, and I quote to be very careful on using non-approved vendors for any sort of mailing. They would suggest you look at our select vendor program and see if the vendor has been approved. If they are not approved on the vendor list, I would look and see if your vendor is on the submitted vendor list. If there is a no in the acceptable use for use column, you're prohibited from using the vendor. So I don't even want to be around all state corporate. I don't want them on, I don't want to be on that list to go through approval because it says, they suggest to being careful if for any um, anybody who's not on their radar, right? So they're not saying that you can't use us as direct mail. 
It's just saying if they vet us, if we go through the process of vetting and they put a no next to us, then you're prohibited from using someone that's marked no on their list. Doesn't say if you're not on the list, you can't use them. Does that make sense? And as long as they're not using State Farm's logo, Farmer's logo, Allstate logo. Well, I know every carrier is yeah. different things, so I shouldn't be mentioning carrier names. But like for them specifically, for her specifically, if she's not using Allstate logo, you know, the direct mail is pretty wide open. Um, correct? Correct. Yeah, and that's typical, right? Like there's no... Yeah. Um, we, we always recommend that we don't use, well, we won't put your logo, all state logo on there. We won't put a farmer's logo on there just because if we did print a logo, we have to get approval from the brand. Um, so that that's one of the reasons, but um, it, it said specifically, if you go back and read that, that memo from them, it doesn't say that you, a vendor has to go through that vetting process in order to use them. It just says if they're on there with a no, you can't use them. Correct. So there's a difference between approved prohibited or nowhere on the radar. Exactly. You don't want to do business with someone that's prohibited, but mainly the main prohibited list are like shady lead vendors out there. Yeah. Shady telemarketing companies and there was lawsuits. So I think we got to all the questions. I like to kind of keep these calls to under an hour, but if there's any other questions that you guys want to ask, okay. um, feel free to ask now. Todd's an amazing resource. He's done a lot of things in his whole career and he's got more things cooking. I'm not going to say anything, Todd. Don't worry, I'm not going to say anything, but he's got uh -huh. more things cooking. He's a smart man, very intelligent guy. I would highly recommend that you reach out to Brittany. Would you mind maybe sharing her contact info one last time before we get everybody back to work? Do you have it pulled up still or no? Yeah, yeah. Um, Brittany. <clears throat> She's fantastic. I would encourage y'all just to at least set up the 15-minute introductory call. Find out what zip codes are available in your area. Um, ask around, you know, in the groups. Um, I love getting feedback like Carrie live while we were on the call and she doesn't even know that we were on the call. Um, it's amazing. So yes, here is her contact info. So calendly.com slash smart email slash 15 men. Uh, or I would just also shoot her an email as well. Brittany at smart email.com. She's amazing. Fantastic resource. And she helps run the day to day of everything smart email. Todd, before we get everybody back to work, man, any final thoughts from you? Anything else that you wanted to share or go over today with everybody? Just hopefully, hopefully I, I gave a little bit of uh, advice, especially when it comes back to Google reviews and people looking up your agency. A lot of people don't realize how that impacts other marketing uh, aspects that they're doing and the success that those other marketing methods have. So think about the dynamics of how online presence affects other types of marketing like direct mail. I think but that I was appreciate really, time. really smart. Really, really smart. I work with an agency, gosh, they in Ohio. Um, and they like incentivize their staff to, to generate um, quotes and stuff. I think he pays like $25 per referral or per public posting on their Google page. They're up to like 90 something five star reviews. It's amazing. And they're getting more and more calls. They're getting more and more calls. So those are things that we can help y'all with too, um, you know, as well. For those of you that might not be a member of CWC, I did just want to say, if you have questions about how CWC can help you and your agency, feel free to reach out to me. I've got my email address right here on the screen, joseph at craigwigginscoaching.com. You can check us out at craigwigginscoaching.com. Use my little discount code, JP discount. Try us out for a dollar a day. We sure would love your first month. We sure would love to show you what we have available. Todd is a part of our program as well as one of our coaches. So I just want to give a quick little plug uh, for Todd McLean. Todd actually works with agencies, agency owners out there who want help with their leads, their marketing, their data, their information. He only has a couple spots open. So check out craigwigginscoaching.com slash Todd. I don't have a fancy button to pull that up. Sorry, I should have done that before. Good. But craigwigginscoaching.com slash Todd. He has a couple openings. So if you wanted to work directly with him on not just this, but so much more, he built a mega agency from scratch. Tell, tell us more about your journey real quick. What was your journey with farmers? What was your trajectory with farmers? Yeah, so I started from scratch 13 years ago. Um, never bought a book, never got any free policies, built that up to around 13 million in premium. Uh, but at the same time I was building that book of business, I was also building agency MVP which was a tech company. So I was spending about for five years, spent two hours a week in the office in my insurance company while building a tech company. Um, so, you know, I, I should have been around 20 million, I think 
if I wasn't distracted. Uh, but I grew every year by at least 20, 25% bonus every year, all the awards you can get. Um, and so it was all about systems and processes, being able to manage and grow at the same time of, of building other companies. So uh, I definitely you, help agents do that. Man, what you did is almost unheard of. I mean, $13 million book with that, that company is amazing. And the fact that you had so many other irons in the fire, you're kind of like the Elon Musk of insurance, dude. Uh, I appreciate like it. You're doing all these things. You're going to Mars, you're building tunnels. You do it at all, man. And seriously, he's got some really cool things coming, really cool things coming hopefully later this year. But with that said, uh, Randy Smith just sent in a Q and a free infomercial. If you're not a CBC member, do something on purpose and join today. You won't regret it. Randy, hey, there thank you, go, you Randy. Man. Thank you for saying that your checks in the mail. I'm kidding. I didn't pay him to say that. But y'all, <laughs> we need to let y'all get back to work. You got policies to write people to protect team members to develop and a call with Brittany to schedule every single mm -hmm. person watching this call. Her calendar needs to be full. Just talk with her, see what their availability is. Talk about the programs. Maybe it's a good fit for you as they are for dozens and dozens, potentially I'm guessing hundreds of CWC member agencies over the years that they've helped write a ton more business. Todd, thank you, my man, for giving us your time today, your time and your talents. Thank you for being a coach as well with CWC. Everyone watching this call live or watching the recording, thank you all for giving us your time, but we got to get back to work, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks so Take much. Bye-bye. Yes, sir.